Navy security is performed by a group of sailors dedicated to ensuring the Navy's security posture in a post-9-11 world. Sailors destined for the Master at Arms raid are trained at Lackland Air Force Base in San Antonio, Texas. Today's Master at Arms training goes beyond speeding tickets and parking infractions. The events of 9-11 changed the world. It changed America and changed the Navy's security posture. I am committed to excellence and fair treatment of all. Since then, the Master at Arms rate has grown to include more than 9,000 sailors. These sailors are tasked with providing protection for the Navy. Roughly 6,000 of them perform traditional law enforcement duties aboard ships and onshore installations. 9-11 impacted the Master at Arms rate a great deal. Prior to 9-11, we were more law enforcement centric. What we primarily trained on was law enforcement activities. After 9-11, we had to change our focus to where we became more anti-terrorism and force protection centric. The goal of the anti-terrorism force protection training exercise is to get the sailors to think. The exercises here are both. They're real world, based on real world events, and also we have a little bit of creativity so we can tailor them to the students, so we can have them think. So they're not just always reacting, they're actually looking around and figuring out what could happen and better ways to position themselves and to counter any kind of threats or whatever the incident is. And what's your business on base today? Uh, well, I was going on leave, but uh, the CEO called me back on and I've just got to report to him real fast. We use the scenarios to have the students go from a point where they have absolutely no idea of what's happening in a crawl stage where we actually help them through some of the scenarios. Okay, but make sure, you know, try to give us a hand signals in case you don't. And they go to a walk stage where they're basically on their own. We give them a little bit of guidance, but not a whole lot, until finally a run stage where they're on their own. As the Navy's security requirements change, so do the topics students are taught at the school. Well, the curriculum has changed quite a bit. When I came through here back in 1993, it was, we talked a lot of, more about actual law enforcement. When, after 9-11, we transitioned, obviously, to more force protection. Uh, training the students to get ready for anything that could happen to them, a little more of the unexpected. Large caliber weapons are now part of the MA arsenal. Prior to 9-11, uh, the courses of fire, there was actually just 9 mil M16 and shotgun. Uh, with the new anti-terrorism requirements that have come out, we've actually accelerated that to now where we teach crew serve weapons. We've actually implemented the M60, M240 training into our course. Firearms simulation was incorporated into the weapons training package. And to the students, they take it as a big video game, but what it is is it's a simulator that allows us, without bringing live ammunition to the environment, to the teaching environment, it gives them opportunity to feel the actual recoil on the weapon, see where rounds are hitting, where they're actually placing the rounds, and it gives them a hands-on where they can feel as if they're actually there, they're actually on the range. They see the targets they're going to be shooting at, they can feel the weapon, the recoil, the actual, hear the rounds going off. It gives them the environment that they're going to be in when they're actually on the range. The MA arsenal also contains non-lethal weapons such as OC spray and batons. Students need to know how to function in an OC environment. This training is 100% realistic compared to what they're going to see out in the fleet. The, uh, from the OC spraying to the baton, all the strikes and the takedowns, this is what we're training them to employ out in the fleet. Down, 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 down. It's a confidence course. What we do is uh, we're showing the trainees that they not only can spray somebody and how it affects the person they're spraying, but if it happens that they get contaminated during the struggle, that they can actually fight through and get the suspect in custody and they're not going to end up dying. Put your feet, cross the feet, burn the bar. Put your knees where they belong. Up. That ain't a proper armbar. Yeah, you can. You Put your knees where they belong. Uh, it's letting them know that just because they're sprayed, that it's not the end of the world. That they can actually have the, the power to fight through it and accomplish the mission to get home safe. The school's overall objective is simple. Well, basically, what we want these students to leave here with is a heightened sense of confidence in what they're doing and their abilities to do it. We want them to know that when they go out there, they have the training to succeed and to function as master at arms out in the fleet. For the Naval Media Center, I'm Sergeant Phil Grondon. If you would like to learn more about Master at Arms training, visit the Naval Expeditionary Command website. Before we break, here's a different look at the MA training at Lackland Air Force Base. It's in the March All Hands magazine, 
as well as stories about Africa Partnership Station and USS Samson. In the March issue of All Hands Magazine, we'll introduce you to the crew of USS Samson as they bring the Navy's newest ship online. We'll tell you about several Navy units who've deployed to Africa, training with military service members of other countries, focusing on maritime security threats. And then we'll introduce you to the Master at Arms Rating and see how their jobs changed after the attack on USS Cole. All Hands, your Navy, your magazine. And now a glimpse through the portal of Navy and Marine Corps history. The flag raising of Iwo Jima is one of the most recognized photographs of World War II. This historic moment was also captured on 16 millimeter film by Marine Corps Sergeant Bill Gunaust. Once shown to the public in newsreels nationwide, the flag raising was successful in lifting the spirits of a war-weary home front. Sadly, Sergeant Knaus did not live to see any of the footage he filmed during the battle. Nine days after the flag raising, Knaus put down his camera due to poor weather and picked up his rifle. While fighting in the honeycomb of caves, he was shot and killed by the enemy. Today, each time this film clip is shown, his memory lives on. He immortalized on film his nation's fight for freedom and Marine Corps honor. Marine Sergeant Bill Ganoust, one of the many heroes of the battle for Iwo Jima. <laughs>